you know, we're talking about the Ukraine, so I want to I want to pivot. I want to talk about that because when you talk when you think about uh, you know social impact, Vladis has been very upfront and very out front uh, in in regards to your support of the, of Ukraine. Uh, can so can you share with us some of the technologies that you've been able to share with the Ukrainians and the impacts they've had? Uh, on the battlefield and, frankly, for humanity in that context? Sure. Yeah, we, we got involved with Ukraine very early on. Um, uh, in fact, as soon as the the latest invasion comes on, I say the latest invasion because we forget sometimes that war's been going on since 2014. It's just scaled up this year to the point where we took notice properly. Um, but uh, the, uh, uh, the difference it's making on the battlefield is just the same as it's making the first responders here and everywhere else. It's saving lives. You know, um, the a lot of those people out there have picked up a rifle the first time to defend their homeland. They don't have a lot of training. Then imagine the, the bravery that takes. And then to go through, I, I told a story on, my, on a, one of my previous podcasts that, OK, so you're an IT consultant. You pick up a rifle six weeks later, you're defending your homeland. No idea. You never found a rifle before in your hand. Now you're asked to go through a wood at night and find the Russians. I'd rather have a drone, wouldn't you? And I think yeah. that's the driver before it. The technology is available now to, to take that really risky operation forward, do it, at, uh, and they are desperate for drones. A thousand a week is the kind of quote at the moment. That's what they're going through. Um, the technologies that jam the drones, cause problems with the drones on both sides is is being used to an extent. And we've really seen the transition of war with, with Ukraine to, you know, cops, drones being used as a life-saving difference uh, on the battlefield. Uh, right the way around to much more sophisticated drones traveling thousands of miles to attack infrastructure so uh, and, and countering those as well. So it's a uh, uh, the robotics world has really, really come into warfare now, whether it's counterterrorism work in, in, in a foreign country as you and I fought through or, or now in, a, in an all out war. World War II style, but with modern technology thrown in there, it's you know it's a huge issue. Whether you're an infantryman with a small backpack drone, or, or right the way up to 30, 40 miles deep, where we are now in a stalled battlefield because of the weather, with artillery uh, counter battery fire against each other, trying to reach out desperately far enough to make the limited ammunition they have uh, really count. So. So it's, which uh, dr which drone or drones, Dean, did Volatis contribute, and in, in what manner did you contribute? So a whole, so a whole draft of dro uh, drones from uh, small, small uh, man pack size stuff. Uh, we, we developed a fixed wing specifically for them at their request. And then we're also pushing for some much more larger uh, capable drones, which uh, hopefully we'll hear here in the next week or two, uh, whether we've been successful in getting those out to, to Ukrainians. Cause they really need something that can see deep and far um, so that they can uh, plan and use the limited. We ever forget they're completely outnumbered still, and that's not going to change. So they have to be extremely efficient and have the intelligence to be efficient. And that's what we're hoping to give them. Now, I know you, you have direct connections with folks on the battlefield, but you're working also through nonprofits. In other words, this is an article I wrote uh, for Drone Life back uh, in last May about what you, Avaladis, and some other commercial off-the-shelf, as you call them, COTS companies were, mm -hmm. uh, were doing. Uh, yeah. So you're working with nonprofits and others, right, kind of outside the normal, like, in other words, it's not the Canadian or U.S. government necessarily sending these drones over from Avaladis, right? No, no, no. It, it, it is charities, uh, government-organized charities right the way through to individuals looking for a drone to send them out. We've made some amazing contacts. There's a very large Ukrainian community in Canada, so that's kind of made a difference. Uh, we've actually hired uh, a Canadian refugee now to help us with, with that case. And, uh, and actually, we've brought Ukrainian Marines over to, uh, to meet with us and advise us and everything else. So we've been very, very engaged with them. So, yeah. And, that's uh, that's amazing, and I you you kind of joked about it on Clubhouse, but you guys wound up on some list with the Russians. Oh, we, we, <laughs> yeah, I think our entire C suite. Somehow, I'm not. So I probably will be after this. You will be but, after uh, this show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The entire our entire C suite is now on the uh, um, is now banned from Russia for life. Yeah, so uh, they're on the on the list. So. Bummer. 
real bummer. Yeah, let's, so let's, let's, uh, so, how you're married for Ukrainian Marine, how will they live with themselves? 